Hi, Joe here at Willie Cottage and today it's another hints and tips on um, spinning up a bat. So I did have a request to do a fractal um, spin preparation of a bat. Um, so last week it was all about how to prep your bat into strips and then into one long roving that you can spin straight off which I actually did do that spin on my own and it turned out really really nice and I hope you all find that really helpful. So today I am going to show you how I prepare my bats for doing a fractal. So get yourself some gradient bats. I'm using two different colours so I've got Midnight here which has got a slight gradient in it and I've got the magnolia tree here um, so it's got Manx Lohan in there um, it's got purples, it starts off purple and then it goes through into the Manx Lohan at the bottom and then I have got this one here, it's called Midnight and it goes from the darker shades actually into really light shades on the other side so that's what we're going to do today, fractal preparation of a bat um, it, it can be a little bit technical. You just gotta remember where you're putting everything is, uh, um, everything when you're laying it up. Now, when you come to dividing your smaller pieces, you can roll it up with your um, your drumstick, your, your large chunky knit needle, and make little faux lags, um, roll lags with them. Or you can just put the pieces to one side, knowing that you've got to spin them together in like a semi gradient to create your striping, your small sections of striping throughout. If you've got a blending board, um, just get your blending board down. Um, I'm not bringing mine down because it's up the stairs. And if I get that out, then the process will just take so much longer. But if you've got a, a blue and a yellow art bat, gradient bat, bats, and you divide off your smaller sections, get your blue goal on your blending board and put that in place, and then get yellow and just slightly overline it and blend that onto the board as well at the same time roll it off and make yourself your roll lags then that will help keep the the colors tied together if you do a fall lag it doesn't quite sit and spin off the same as what it would do if you got it onto your blending board with the larger sections you shouldn't have to do that usually just spin the colors off as you go so um i'm gonna try and tilt you down and you can see exactly what it is that i'm doing i hope you found this video useful um and then i'm going to go and spin it off after that so yeah okay fractal preparation of your bats so that's what we're going to do i'm going to tilt you down and get this going okay I'm just try to move my chair out of the way so your bats come folds over like that you want to unravel unravel it unravel it so here's my gradient here so it's a darker more purples on this side a lot more blacks and it gets a little bit lighter and ends up with these softer white colors on this end what i want to do with this is this is the way it was folded over and you can see the creases here what i want to do is fold it along the grain and then i'm gonna split that in half okay wish me luck because this is not easy oh, oh dear me there we go it's coming it's coming okay so there we go. So I'm just going to put them to one side and line them on top of each other and then get my other gradient bat, which has got Manx Lohan in it and Merino and other bits and pieces. And it's quite typical exactly where the gradient goes on this. So once again, I want to fold that over on itself along the gradient, along the, the grain of the wool. And I'm going to split that again in half. There we go. That was a lot easier to do that one. So what I want to do now is just roughly make sure that the bats are about the same size. Now those two halves, okay, so there's the magnolia tree and there's the midnight. I'm going to stick those two halves to one side and I'm going to spin them off on one bobbin. Okay, so the next one's this gradient one. So I want to, I'm going to split it in down the middle here. Okay, and try and make it as even as possible. I'm going to get aim for six off of these. So if I go, and you want to try and make them all the equal in the, the width. Okay, so I'm going to stick that one. Might end up with actually a bit more, might end up with four on either side. So I'm going to stick 
Strip those off. Strip them off. So you just do strips for now. And it looks like I'm looking at seven. Maybe, maybe. Actually, yeah, I can get another one out of those. Okay. Right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm just going to plunk them to one side a minute. I'm going to do the exact same with this one, the midnight one. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. Just put that down the middle. Oh, that one's down the middle. And I should be able to get eight out of this. So if I split this down the middle again on this side, and then that makes sure that I definitely get eight strips out of this half a bat. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. Make sure you keep them in colour order when you're doing this. And then strip this one again. Those two there, and then again, tear down the middle, and those two there. Okay, so we've got her large halves here. Okay, so we've got two of these halves from the one from one bat each, from one each of those colours, and now I want to do is take off a small section off the bottom of each one of these so you end up with just sort of about three three quarters and a little piece there so go ahead and just take off your little strips you could get methodical and weigh them out if you've got the time to do that so you know you've got the exact same weights on each of them but this is just for demonstration purposes i just want to show you how to do this the same as what you would do with a fractal roving so that there Quarter piece of that section there. Quarter piece off of this section. And a quarter piece of this section. Right. So there's your gradients there. Okay, of all your small pieces. Do the exact same thing again on this one. So I'm just going to squish these up so you can actually see me. I'm not losing any of my, my colour gradients. So pull off. Oh, small quarter off of that one. Punk it underneath. Small quarter off that one. Punk it underneath. This is really fun things to sort of do when you're new to spinning and using bats. Um, it just gives you a different outlook on the different types of preparations that you can do with a bat to get more out of it. Right, so again, off this one. Oh. There we go. Then my next one. There we go. And again. Okay. And the last one here. Whoa. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is layer. So I'm just going to push these over again. Move these out. So there's my dark, dark into light. And then on this one here, dark going into light. What I want to do is get my dark little one and my dark off one bat and on the other bat and then put those two together. And remember that I'm going to, I'm going to do it so I, I spin off with the midnight first and then the little one joins. So when you've got these two pieces, this is the time you want to get your blending board out. If you've got one or even your drum carder and just run them off, blend them through side by side, slightly layering, so you can end up with them joined together and they'll make an easier fold lag. So that's what you do. I might actually pop upstairs and go and do that in a minute, but this is what I'm wanting to do first is just prep my wheels so they lay on top of each other. So that's that one and that one, the next one, and this one lay on top of each other 
and then the next gradient along lay them two together lay them two together this one and this one lay them two together this one and this one this one and this one and they get lighter and lighter and lighter see as we go along and I've got to do the exact same thing with the top pieces here so I have the dark of the magnolia tree and the dark of the midnight and I'm going to lie that on top of there I'll try and move that over so you can see then get the next one of the magnolia uh, of the midnight and lay that on top of the darker section of the magnolia tree and lay them on there and so on and so forth so just keep going through until you've got all your rovings your roving strips lay on top of each other in the same gradient that you tore them in go along there's that one and then that one and I've got two left that one that one that one and that one so if you bear with me I'll just go so what you've ended up with is two bats approximately 50 grams of each you're going to decide which one you're going to start off with so if I go with midnight to start with and then once I've finished spinning this onto my wheel I will then spin off the magnolia tree so that's one then once I've done that on the other bobbin I've got 50 roughly 50 grams well actually no it'd be 100 grams so it's 100 grams on one bobbin and then 100 grams of prepped fibers so I am literally going to spin all the little ones off first one two three four five six seven eight nine or eight so they'll all run off one after the other to create small block striping sections and then once I've done all of these in the the purple and the, the midnight and the magnolia, per, midnight and magnolia, midnight and magnolia, midnight, do the exact same thing all the way through on the smaller sections on your little quarters and then on your three quarter sections do the exact same thing, spin them off so you've got midnight, magnolia, midnight, magnolia, midnight, magnolia and then spin them all off all the way through the exact same gradient until you get to the end and then ply them off. So if you bear with me a second, I'll go and pop up the stairs, go and get my blending board just so I can show you what I mean with these little pieces. Bear with me. Okay, so I've popped up and got my, my uh, blending board and I've got my two dowels. I did buy myself some knit, chunky knitting needles the other day, there, but they're just not quite chunky enough. Um, so what you want to do is these are the two, where is it? There is. Here's my two sections that you've just seen me split up in a little quarter. So I'm starting off with the darker one first. So what I want to do is run it down my blending board. And then just keep going. I'm going to do it twice first and then I'm going to get the magnolia tree one. And I'm going to just slightly, ever so slightly, lean it over the top of the midnight one that I've just done. Get that on there, finish that off. Okay, get the rest of the, magno the midnight one and run that over the top, blend that in. Okay, get my carder, pack that down. So now we've got these two together and then I'm gonna just waft that up pack it between my, my dowel ins or your drumsticks or your chunky knit needles just lift it up a bit and as you would making any roll lags but at the same time you're making a slight gradient in these roll lags that you can spin off okay I'm just Gently take one out, take one out, and remember there's my black side with my midnight, and that's my magnolia tree down the bottom. So, what I'll do is I'll put you on fast forward while I'm doing these, and you can see exactly what I'm doing and the end results from making these mini ones up.
Okay, so there we have it. So I've got one, two, three, four. So there we go. You've just seen a picture I've just taken and put in before this shot as part of the video. So you can see the gradient going through there. So I need to make sure that when I'm spinning these off that I do top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, and then just keep on doing that and following that so you'll end up with independent striping. Okay, so that is your quarters all put in your made into uh, poonies. Now I'll just show you, I'm going to I'm gonna actually blend up all of these into roll legs, it might actually be easier, but I'll show you that if you don't have a blending board but you have some chunky knitting needles, there is a way that you can do this without having to um, use a blending board. It's simple, it's not it's not exact, it's not going to be perfect, but it's just another way for you to do this if you've only got chunky needles at home. So I'll just, excuse my hand in the way, I do apologise. Right, so get your two strips that you've got from different, your different colours and just open them up, stretch them out a little bit, open them up a little bit. This one's not as wide as the other ones, but at the end of the day, it doesn't quite matter so I'm just flattening them both out a little drafting them out a little bit flattening them out a little bit more and then I'm literally going to place that on top of there okay do that get your knitting needle chunkier the better and just make yourself a little faux lag okay you can do this with the smaller ones if as I say if you don't have a blending board but there you go just roll it up It will more than likely still fall apart when it comes to spinning it like this. But what you're doing is keeping your colour gradients that you've just split up. So your little colour piles that you've made, this one here, this one here. And you can quite easily, when it comes to spinning it, so if you just roll it really loosely. But when you're spinning it, if you find it is falling apart, literally just unravel it. And then you've got your two little sections and that you can just take to take one piece, you know, you're spinning the dark one first and then the other one second. But it's just a way of just keeping them all together so you don't lose count of where you're at with your gradients. So you can make a little fall like you can do the exact same thing with these if you don't have a blending board. So there's always an alternative to be able to do something. Um, so yeah, you literally just do that all the way along and make each one. And I think what I'll do is I'll just do the exact same method now with the rest of these, saves me doing the blending board and you can see exactly what I mean. So there you go, so uh, you've just seen the picture then of the magnolia tree and the midnight. So I'm going to start off with the midnight first and I'm going to spin both of these bats onto one bobbin. So that is 100 grams onto one bobbin, okay, and then I'm going to put that to one side. Right, then once I've done that, you, I mean it's six and a half a dozen which way you start either with the, the three quarter ones or the little mini quarter row legs. So whichever ones you do with those, that's up to you, but just make sure that you do it in the exact same grading way. So 
I'm going to start off with my dark, dark, so end to end, end to end. So I've got Midnight Magnolia, Midnight Magnolia, Midnight Magnolia. And I'm going to do that exact same spinning all the way through to the very end because I've got, I go from dark to mostly brown, okay? And then exactly the same on these ones and I've got the exact same amount of row lags as well. So I'm literally going to spin Mag uh, midnight magnolia midnight magnolia all the way to the end till i get to this last one which has got a lot more of the manx lohan at the bottom of it so you'll be able to see the color gradient that you go through and uh, you can do this with any type of gradient but just if you're going to do two different colorways make sure that you have um the same amount of approximate same amount of weight but you've got the same amount of divide um dividing throughout now that's not to say that you can't do this with one bat if that's all you've got okay there's nothing to say that you don't split that in half like we've just done and then all the little sections that you've got from there strip that off on the gradient all the way through spin off your 50 grams of your bat and then make your little section strip off that you've got your three quarters and then you've got your little quarter sections and then spin them off on one, spin your 50 grams off at the very end of that one and then ply it all off. If you do it into an Andean ball, like an in and out ball or wind it onto a cake or ply them off two bobbins, it all depends. I mean, not everybody's got lots of bobbins spare, especially if they've got an old spinning wheel. And then that's literally it. Ply it off together and there you've got your fractal spin. So, this could take some time. There's a lot there to spin. So I will go off and spin this. I will spin it in sections. Um, it will probably be fast forwarded because it will take me the best part of the afternoon to do this. Um, in between watching TV, cups of coffee, feed the birds. Always got the bit, feed the birds. And sort any other bits and pieces that I've got going. But I will film this um, and I will stop in between each section just to remind you what comes next, okay? I hope you find this video really helpful. Um, hit that like button. It just helps other people on the platform find me. Subscribe for more content. I do my pre-recorded videos and they come up on a Wednesday. Usually depends on my internet. But Wednesday is when I have them premiere. And don't forget my live chat on a Wednesday as well on my YouTube channel. And I don't... All this has come out of my stash. I've literally taken this off my website to be able to do this video for you. And I don't get sponsored or paid from YouTube. I've only got 111 followers on my YouTube. So I would appreciate if you shared me around a little bit to anybody or let people know that I am here. I'm willing to help and put suggestions of what you would like me to do next in a video because I'm all up for another ideas. And if I don't know the answer, I will go off and find it. Um, but yeah, I do have a Kofi account. You're more welcome to go over there and, and give me a donation of a cup of coffee. Every little bit helps. Um, and I will be hopefully, once my numbers start going up a bit, doing some giveaways on my YouTube channel. Um, or discount codes. All little count for discount codes, but there's only a limited time. And if you go over and subscribe to my website, you get a lifetime mem uh, VIP discount code that gets 10% off anything in the shop, except for exclusive items like currently I've got my Easter bundles listed on, listed on the website. So you can't use uh, the discount code on there or on the body clubs, but everything else you can do. Anyway, I'm off to go and spin this off. I will see you with the results at the end. Okay, so remember last week on my video, I showed you how to create a roving from your bat um, by splitting down into sections and then stopping at the bottom to create these elbow joints. So that's what I've done with those large, with those half sections of the roughly 50 grams of these bats. So I am just going to, I'm just, and that way you can see how I get around those elbow corners um, on those. And I'm going to start off on the darker section so i keep the gradient uh color change running concurrent all the way through and i'll do that with the magnolia tree one as well um so this is my lighter section i think this is my lighter section yeah that's my darker section this is my lighter section so i'm going to braid that bit there no it's this bit here braid from here the bottom piece and i'm going to make myself braid just so it's easy to spin with um I've got the colour change that's very subtle on this one that goes all the way through it. Um, and then I'll just spin straight from here. 
See, it's so much easier just to split that on your lap with that 50 grams. It takes all but a few minutes to do it. And you see me do it last week on my video. So there you go. I've got my braid here of the midnight and I've left a good section for myself out. I've already drafted it all beforehand. So I'm going to spin this off now, okay? Okay, so I'm just coming to my elbow section and I just want to show you how easy it is to spin past this bit, okay? So I'm coming up to that in a minute and you literally just follow the wool. It's not going to um, cause you any problems. I could probably have done this at the very beginning, but you would have sussed it out by now. So look, there's my elbow joint where I've split there literally just let it flow through and you end up with a straight line okay there's your elbow there's a split let it flow through and look it is a straight line so i'm literally just spinning as i would do i'm just quite far close down to the elbow now and i'm just holding it in my hand I'll just slow down my spinning a little bit for you. And you can see me coming into this section now where my hand's holding it. This is the elbow split that I've got in my hand at the moment. And I'm just drafting and spinning out as I would normally do. And it just quite easily clumps together and spins out quite smoothly. It won't tear on you if you're careful spin that through there it, there's the back end of it there in my hand just keep spinning it all the way through there's that little scrawny bit that you could see hanging down a moment ago there we go that's nearly at the end of this section onto the straight run there we go And there's me, the rest of that drafting. There's a thin piece and just back to spinning as I would normally do.
I don't want to stop it. Okay, so I've spun off those two halves of 50 gram bats and you can see the midnight one just there and then this is the magnolia tree that I've applied on the top. So that's about 100 and a bit grams that are on there now. So next I've gone with um, spinning the three quarter length ones that you see me spin earlier on. So I'm going to spin them from the dark end through to the light end. They will probably, I'll probably just unravel these ones take that to one side, stick it on my lap, spin this off first, then spin the next one. And then I'll just keep repeating that through the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight altogether. So I didn't finish off doing, I didn't record the video of me doing the other bat on that bobbin, mostly because it takes, it's taken me about 40 minutes to do that and filming all of that and speeding it all up. There's only so much of that you can, you can do, but you've got the gist of what it is that I'm doing. So what I'll do is I'll, film me spinning off at least this one i'll get on with the rest of it and when i go on to the little quarters i'll film me spinning those off and then we'll get on to the plying okay
so I've spun all of those larger three quarter length roll legs off but you see what I was doing because I, I spun two or three of them on here to start with um, and I took out the, the brown section and put that to one side and spun off the darker one and then spun off the next one so here's the next ones that we've got to do the smaller ones so do the exact same thing again start from the top spin all the way down and I've got another I've got eight of these to do so I'll sit spin this off and then we'll be at the plane plying stage in a bit Right, so that is both the bobbins plied off now. Um, I think that was my first one. So that's the 250 grams on there. And then there's the one with all the smaller bobbins. So I'm now going to ply this off. And I started this video at 11 o'clock this morning. And it's definitely coming up for 4 o'clock now. And I'm starting to lose the light. So I will um, get on with this quick smart. And I will see you on the other side. Okay, so there we have it, a fractal prepared gradient, two bats, then spun in size order, like you would do with the roving, but just done 
with bats instead and it's turned out really really pretty it's all those different colors and there you can see where the tones are splitting and then you've got the gradients of the different stripings coming through so I wouldn't put this one on the website you see how it goes but I'm really really pleased with the way even the pops of the neon that have come through from the actual midnight bat and then you've got the Manx Lohan which is really really calmed down and then you've got I think it's rose fibres then you've got these soft cotton neps in there as well but yeah it's really really nice really pretty so there you go um two bats gradient contrasting colors from the same color palette though it was purples but it was black and purple and then the natural manx lohan with purple and i'm really really happy with the way that that's come out especially as a spin um just have a play with it you can use colours that clash or colours that you wouldn't normally do together and do the exact same method. As I say, you can do it with one single bat. Instead of doing the two colours, do the exact same. Split it lengthways along the actual way the fibres are going so you get the two gradient sections on two halves. Then spin one half off and then split the other gradient section into little bits. Draft out a little bit, save yourself a quarter and then spin it up as you go. And you can do the exact same method there and then wind it into a cake and then spin it on itself or apply it on itself together and you'll end up with a fractal. So that's just, it's, I think it's about half past four now. So this move, this filming is taking me four and a half hours, five hours, yeah, five and a bit hours now to get this one uploaded. It's always a bit of a nightmare doing spinning videos. It does take out a massive chunk of my day. And it's Tuesday and that's me now. I'm done in. I can't do anything else. I was going to get some dyeing and get some locks washed, but that's not going to happen at all today. Um, I also wanted to let you know, anybody that's not been... Um, not been on my website if you subscribe go over to my website and subscribe um to willy cottage you will get a 10 percent discount code that you can use on any of the products as i said earlier on um and also my easter bundle sets now they're open for uk and overseas the 65 pounds but that's including three i think it's 320 grams of fiber so you get in that you get 930 gram personally hand blended uh, mini bats that have all been hand dyed and hand blended and, and created to be completely unique and then you get for the 10th day is um, a 50 gram art bat and there's all the themes of cakes you can actually find the listing on my website but I will post a little picture at the end of this video so you can see it now for UK that's tracked um, postage and it's included in your 65 pounds if you're overseas i do post as a tract international it will have extra gifts in there all the items will be gift wrapped as well exactly the same amount of effort that i put into my christmas of our advents going to my easter bundle sets so if you'd like to purchase one or you would rather do it message me and i can send you an invoice uk and overseas i'm quite happy to do a part payment which is a non-refundable deposit of 35 pounds and then the second one i will contact you before a dispatch because i will be closing the orders down from the 15th of march um if you want to pay a, a, a deposit by that date um and then the second payment will be probably around about the first second of april because i will be posting them out the week so you're receiving them the weekend before easter so about the 5th of april um but if the U, um, us i will probably post out the end of march so you can get there in plenty time so just reach out to me drop me a message via my social media accounts um or if you want more chats or something like that you can get hold of me and say joe i'm really interested in your easter sets and we'll take it from there so i hope you enjoyed this video catch me for a live chat at noon today um this is wednesday afternoon so it's tuesday today um wednesday afternoon at noon for the live chat and i'll be sitting spinning up um starting to ply my art bats for my swag along so I really appreciate your support and come and join me there. Um, I better go. It's been a long day and I'm hurting. So I'm off to get my tea. So thank you very much for your support and take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next week.